Hello. Oh, hello. And I'm I'm back. I've said that in a few different videos now, but I don't know which one's going to go out first. So, for now, uh, let's talk about a deck that I've personally been working on for about two weeks now. Uh, by the time this video comes out, I've seen some little tidbits here and there that other people are also discovering the possibilities of this deck. I don't know if the version that I'm gonna show you of the deck is the best deck today, but this version includes any and all changes that I've made to the deck since I've started playing it. Um, I find it to be as consistent as a deck like this at this point can probably be, um, but there might be different versions of this deck that are more consistent overall. But anyways, the deck that we are talking about today is something I'm calling One Hit Wonder. Um, the idea of the deck is in a perfect game scenario, we're playing against a lot of um, decks that are tag team Pokemon, right? So you have tag team Pokemon, give up three prizes. Okay, cool. And then in terms of the meta right now, you have ADP. ADP is a fantastic uh, card with a great GX that gives you 30 extra damage and an extra prize card every time you take a prize. Now, that fine, that makes uh, tag team four prizes. But the idea is, can you take even more prizes with one knockout than four? Is that possible? Is that something that you can do? So, you know, I started looking around and saying, okay, well, what's, what are the opportunities here? Obviously, the, the, I think Team DDG, I think maybe a month ago now, maybe a little bit more, but they debuted a deck that used a Beastbringer. Um, and that Beastbringer says, if you have six prizes remaining, and you knock out a GX Pokemon with an Ultra Beast that this card is attached to, you take an extra prize. So, okay, there we have the makings of five prizes potentially. Um, but you have to KO with an Ultra Beast. And then, in Cosmic Eclipse, we got a Guzzlord, a baby Guzzlord, uh, which allows you with its attack to take an extra prize. So add all of those up, three prizes for a tag team, one prize added for the GX, one prize added for Beastbringer, and one prize on Red Banquet, which is Baby Guzzlord's attack that tells you you can take an extra prize if the uh, Pokemon is KO'd. So that's all six prizes. In a perfect game, that is how this deck works. Um, it is a Greens ADP build. Uh, I think there's a few people experimenting with Greens builds. I have a friend of mine who's experimenting with a different list of Greens, but I'm not going to share that. Today, I'm going to share, you, share with you my Greens ADP uh, Baby Guzzlord build. Um, and yeah, I also did a video where I play this deck against what I'm calling Vanilla ADP, just the stock standard ADP you've been seeing everywhere, um, with my friend Tony. Uh, I'm going to leave that video, uh, that video unlisted because I had absolutely horrendous draws. I've played this deck, a version of this deck in, in some iteration so many times and I had terrible draws the first two games and then I just made a really dumb mistake the last game. I was just bad at math. Uh, so those are on me. But if you do want to see a version of this deck in action, I'd say the beta version maybe of this deck in action, um, you can check that video out. It'll be in the description. I might put an I up here as well. But um, you can see it in action. I'm also going to play the version of the deck that I'm going to show you today online, make a video of that so you can see this exact version because I changed it after the matches yesterday. Um, but without further ado, let's just get into this deck profile. All right, let's uh, keep this going. So I fixed the light a little bit, so hopefully there's not quite as much glare. Uh, and these are the non-glare cards too. Anyways, um, Start with four ADPs. I have tried versions with two ADPs, with three ADPs. You desperately want to start your ADP because the last thing you want to do is waste one of your greens trying to find a switch later. So that is the first step, four ADPs. Uh, and the idea here is you want to get your GX off as soon as possible, um, but you also want to make sure that you can survive long enough to ultimate Ray, preferably onto a Guzzlord. So let's talk about Guzzlord. I'm actually only running two guzzlords, two baby guzzlords from Cosmic Eclipse. Um, I've opted for just two because you don't need more than that. If you if you prize both of them, then you have other ways to win technically. It's gonna be a bad game, but two I think is good so you don't prize both of them. 
Odds are you'll have at least one. You'll probably have two in your deck. Um, you're never gonna get, be able to power up more than two of these anyways. So two is the most that you really need in this deck. Um, and if everything goes right, you only need one powered up to get the KOs. Now, initially this was all the Pokemon I played, just ADP and Guzzlord and some different counts. But after chatting with friends and playing this a bit, there's a couple of cards that I think could be helpful. I was convinced to put in a Drampa just for the ADP v ADP matchup. Um, the Drampa really helps with Keldeo. You can one shot a Keldeo. So if they go into a Keldeo with AD against your ADP, you don't have a Guzzlord or you know something. Basically, you don't have a way to knock it out with a Guzzlord. If you only have ADPs on the board, then they can just stall you out with Keldeo and then you lose. You auto lose basically. Um, so that is why I've opted for at least one other non Guzzlord like attacker. Also, this one only has a retreat of one, which is good. If you start with it, it's not the end of the world. And then finally, the last Pokemon here is a Mimikyu. Now you can go with either a Psychic Mimikyu that is still in standard or this Fairy Mimikyu. Fairy Mimikyu is the one that I just have a physical card of. I think it's also nice because in the mirror match of ADPs, whatever version they're running, if you get this powered up with, uh, you know, two energies uh, or a counter gain or something like that, then you can one shot an ADP. If they ultimate raid, then you just ultimate raid them back and one shot them. So it's nice for that. The other version would be nice. The other, uh, the psychic version would be good for Mewtwo. I feel like this deck has a really tough time against Mewtwo. So that is a reason to maybe think about the psychic. Maybe you run both. Um, you just have to you just have to find the space somewhere, which you can do in this deck, I think. Uh, so yeah, that is the Pokemon. Not a ton of Pokemon here, uh, but the whole point of this deck is you shouldn't need a lot of Pokemon to win. If you need more Pokemon than this to win, uh, then you're not going to win. That's just as simple as that. This is a bit of a high roll deck. So you gotta high roll both your opponent a little bit as well as what you naturally draw into. So you minimize the need for your greens, let's say. But getting into your trainers, uh, let's talk about this. This is a greens ADP, as I was saying. So you're gonna run four greens right there. Uh, that is a critical card. Uh, and when you use those and what you use those for is also critical. So uh, you just have to play that out. You'll see in some of the games, like the different things I greens for. Sometimes I greensed, I think in the matchup when I didn't need to, when I could have just saved the greens for later, not put myself in a position to grab something that I didn't really need. But yeah, so four greens. To, uh, to set that right. Then, in terms of other supporters, we have two Guzma and Hollis. I put two in there after I had a couple of games where I prized the one of, and I needed to go get a special energy or something, and I just couldn't find it. So I put two in there. You probably won't play two in a game, but this is just for prizing. Um, the next supporter we have here is Mallow and Lana. Now, I've put the Mallow and Lanas in here, because if, and this is a strategy that somebody will use against this deck, uh, if they're thinking smart, if you have to put some other Pokemon, a Guzzlord, Drampa, something else down, say you start with it early, um, a good strategy for the opponent is to gust up that Pokemon, especially after you've ultimate raid and put energy onto that. Uh, if they have custom catchers and can gust up that Pokemon, then, they knock that out and all you're left with is ADP um, and that's bad. So <clears throat> Malum and Lana is there if you need to buy another turn uh, to do damage. So again, I haven't really explained this yet, but the whole idea behind ADP Guzzlord, Guzzlord's only going to do max 180 damage in this deck. To knock out a tag team, you need to chip damage it in some form. So that ultimate ray is the first hit you need to get onto their tag team. They can Mallow and Lana away and potentially come back and hit you. So you need to have your own Mallow and Lanas so you can do the exact same thing back to them. Mallow and Lana heal some damage. So you're basically, you're trying to um, time things essentially. Put them into situations where they have to leave something in the active with enough damage on it that your Guzzlord can come in and take the knockout. So outside of uh, these trainers, we also play one Cynthia and Caitlyn for both draw and getting back probably a greens. Um, and then also one Lieutenant Surge of Strategy because a big part of this deck long-term is that you feel like you're probably gonna go down on prizes first. 
Um, it's okay in many instances to lose an ADP, to be the first one that loses an ADP, because if they take out your ADP, let's say, um, but they have something up there that has 150 or 180 damage on it, um, then that's perfect. Because if you have put the damage on, you have accelerated energy most likely to a Guzzlord. That means your Guzzlord should be ready to then go in there and take all six prizes. So it's fine if they take three or four prizes if you're up against another ADP, that's fine. But you have the Lieutenant Surge for those moments where you actually can use it. Now let's get to the item cards. We have four Poke Gears put in there just so you can have as much opportunity to find those greens as possible. Um, getting the greens and, and sort of using them when you need them is critical to this deck, to finding the right energies, the switches, the items, etc., that you need when you need them. Outside of Poke Gear, we also play three tag calls, both to search out our tag team supporters as well as our ADPs. Um, I have three in here, not because we are gonna use all three of them to get all of these different supporters that we need in a whole game, but because I wanna increase the odds as much as possible of naturally drawing into a tag call early so I don't have to greens for a tag call. That's really the idea behind the edits I made to this deck was how do I maximize the things that I don't want to have to use my green search to go get. So early game, perfect world you start ADP. Not so perfect world you start something else. So I need to greens at least for a switch at some point. But if I can draw into a tag call early, especially turn one, then I can just go get my ADP um, and I don't have to use greens. Outside of that, in terms of finding the other Pokemon when you need, we have three Pokemon communications and we have one Ultra Space. Now the Ultra Space I put in there, if you go first or if you're up against an opponent that doesn't play Chaotic Swell, that Ultra Space is live. Uh, it's a target for your Guzma and Hala, which is nice. Um, if, however, you don't find it, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. That's why I only have one. Um, it's also there to maybe bump a Shrine of Punishment. Uh, but outside of that, or maybe a Wondrous Labyrinth, I don't know who's playing that though. Outside of that though, you don't have a lot of other stadiums. That might be an issue depending on the deck that you're up against, but I rarely find stadiums to be an issue if I'm playing against them. So those are your supporter and Pokemon search options. Let's get to some of the other cards. So you have to think about energy acceleration. That Guzzlord is two darkness, two colorless energy, four energy to use it. That's a lot of energy, but it is an Ultra Beast. So we play Beast Ring uh, because if you're not up against an ADP matchup, they're only gonna take three prizes off of your first ADP, most likely. So you can Beast Ring then onto a Guzzlord if they knock it out before you have the ability to accelerate energy. Not ideal, but something you can do. You also have two energy spinners. I have these two energy spinners because again, uh, there's a lot of different types of energy in this deck. If you can get an energy spinner early or if you need to greens for an energy spinner, so you make sure you get your energy every single turn for your ADP, that's why this energy spinner is in here. Anyways, let's talk about gusting now. For gusting, um, this deck requires that you are able to bring up the Pokemon that you need to bring up when you need them. Some matchups, um, that is simply bringing a, an injured Tag Team GX Pokemon back so you can take as many prizes as possible. In other matchups though, you need to get around things like Dolsol. So we play four Custom Catchers in this deck. We also play one Great Catcher. The reason we play Customs is we're a green deck. Greens can go find your Custom Catchers whenever you want. So play the Custom Catchers, give yourself the option, uh, play one Great Catcher so that you can just go get a Tag Team or a GX if that's all you need. That's why I put the Great Catcher back in. Initially, I took it out. Um, okay, a few more items. Let's just go with three switches. You need it. Guzzlord has a four retreat cost. It is garbage. You don't want to have to use a Mallow and Lana just to get out of the active with Guzzlord. So three switches is, I think, necessary. Then you get two reset stamps. The reason for two, prizing, one. And then two, your opponent's probably going to go down to something like three or sometimes even one prize before you can win the game. If that is the case, reset stamp. If you can reset stamp them, put them into a situation that they can't escape from, that's all you really need to do to win. 
Final item cards, and these are critical. Final item cards are tool cards. Now, as I was saying earlier, Beast Bringer is the key to getting that sixth prize. So we have two Beast Bringers. We also have a Choice Helmet. The reason you have a Choice Helmet in this deck is, um, the reason you have a Choice Helmet in this deck is one, if you're up against Gardevoir Sylveon, you get the Choice Helmet early. After applying Weakness and Resistance, they hit you for 150. That's 300. Minus 30 is 270. You are not dead with a Choice Helmet. Now, they can certainly FABA that Choice Helmet away. So it's not a guarantee, but that means they have to go get the Faba. They have to waste a turn doing that with their greens. So make them work a little harder for it. Outside of that, Choice Helmets are just good in general to dampen a little bit of damage. Um, it makes some of the Mewtwo and Mew things, they can't Charizard GX 300 automatically. They have to find another way to knock out your ADP early in a Mewtwo and Mew. So one Choice Helmet, most likely for the ADP. And then I have one counter gain. This is a new addition. Um, the idea with this counter gain is if you have a terrible situation where, let's say you GX, but ADP is able to knock your other ADP out before you're able to accelerate energy, counter gain is good both for Drampa, potentially for Guzzlord, but really it's for Mimikyu. Um, with Mimikyu, you can put a counter gain on put a rainbow energy on, which we'll get to in a second, and then immediately go in with one attachment, attack for turn, um, for whatever the attack they used last turn was. So that at least can get a little bit of chip damage, buy you a little bit of time um, in certain matchups. Now, it's just, it's, sometimes it's tough, right? Uh, but I put it in there just in case. Now let's talk about energies. This deck has a weird energy spread. I'm playing two rainbow energies for obvious reasons. You have a bunch of different types of Pokemon. They need a bunch of different types of energy. Two rainbow energies is useful. We have one beast energy. Beast energy, obviously for Guzzlord, that increases its attack by 30. It can also act as one of the darkness energies if you need it. So that means Guzzlord's max attack damage is 180 after a GX. Outside of that, I have three metal energies. I have three water energies. And I have four darkness energies. Now, I know that the darkness spread seems low. Again, darkness, four of them is enough for two Guzzlords. You also then have your beasts and your rainbows if you need it. Um, I don't find that four, I need more than four, really. If I need more than four, again, I've probably lost the game already. So. This energy spread is designed so that you have outs if you need them. It's enough energy of every type so that you're not gonna prize all of your energy of one type, which has happened, but I only had two. It's enough energy in total so that you hopefully find an attachment for turn every turn. And it's enough special energy so that your Guzma and Halas always have a valid target. Uh, and that is the deck right now. Obviously, there's probably other versions that one could could play, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what other people are playing. I saw uh, Tricky Jim last night actually posted a screenshot from the challenge that they were doing, and it was ADP Guzzlord, and I'm like, okay, okay, so this deck is, is emerging now. Uh, but yeah, I've been working on this one for a couple of weeks, and uh, I like this list. I'm gonna take it, I think, to my cup tomorrow. I took it to a challenge, my old version, and I went two and two. I feel like two and two at a challenge is, it's obviously not the best, but it wasn't 0 and 4. So caught a lot of people by surprise. This is, a, I think, a deck that can catch people by surprise um, until it, people catch on to what you're doing. But the good news about this deck is if you play it really well, you don't have to throw down your Guzzlord until you're ready to ultimate Ray. So they don't necessarily know the type of deck you're playing if you don't give it away. But anyways, that is it for me. Um, hopefully y'all like this deck profile. Give it a try, at least online. Uh, maybe bring it to a challenge. I don't know if it's the kind of deck that goes to a regional. Uh, I think it has some consistency issues, but yeah. Let me know what you think. Uh, and uh, keep an eye out in the description. I'm gonna post the in the IRL battle video with Tony. It's gonna be unlisted, so it won't be up any other way, but cool video. Uh, 
very bad performance from this deck, which is why it's unlisted, but you can at least see it. And I'll also have a video where I play online with this version in particular. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in a future video. Carpe awesome.